Hey guys, what's up? I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps. Welcome back to the channel. We have something super cool today from our friends over at lighttake.com. You can grab one of these in the description below. Please do, that will help out the channel. This is the JXD 510. It's the predecessor to the JXD 509, which we have sitting right to the left of me. I'm gonna show you a little comparison of that later. Uh, but right away, out of the box, this one looks extremely different. The design on the frame is kind of more aggressive looking and a little more alien kind of looking in, indeed, for sure. So there's something neat about this one that I'm gonna show you in this video um, that the previous version it didn't didn't have so something new on this a little easter egg for this video so stay tuned um, right now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look in in the accessories bag and show you what comes along with it and then i'm going to show you the transmitter and then we're going to go outside and do some flying so coming up next Okay guys, really quickly, let's go over the accessories that come with the X Predator. This is the 510G uh, by Lytake.com. It does actually come with an extra set of props, which is pretty awesome because I break them quite a bit. Um, go ahead and set those to the side. And the rest of the stuff in your accessories pack is your 5.8 gigahertz antenna. It's very important that you put this on um, the first time that you power up your monitor because you don't want to fry your VTX in the monitor. If you don't have this on, it could definitely risk doing that. Also in the accessories pack, you have USB charger for your battery. And the X Predator comes with a 600 milliamp hour 30C battery. So 30C is not bad for one of these smaller uh, drones and and I actually like to write the name of what it is on the battery um, because I have quite a few of these batteries and sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually write the month and the year that I got it so I know how old it's getting um, as the years go by yeah I've had some of these batteries last me five years or more um, also in the bag we have charge lead for your 5.8 gigahertz monitor. And this is really nice because some of the monitors that come with these smaller drones actually take uh, AAA batteries. And this one has a rechargeable battery inside the monitor, which is a big advantage for you because it eats up batteries super quick. Uh, also in here you have your micro SD card reader. Just pop your SD card right in there and put it in your computer to transfer your videos. And it does come with, I believe it was a two gigabyte micro SD card, a mini screwdriver, some extra screws here, and another screwdriver. Now, wanted to tell you guys, the camera on here is a two megapixel camera, um, and everything is wired up already for you under here. You don't have to do any plugging in of anything. Um, and you're, you're pretty much ready to go. So all you need to do is charge up your battery and put some double A's in your transmitter and you're ready to fly this thing. Um, the next thing that we have accessories wise that came with it was prop guards as well. You do get some prop guards which I'm not going to install for our flight purposes. And you get an English manual. Now it seems that they sent me the Pioneer 509 version. Um, I don't know if you guys have got this one already and you got the same manual, but most of the stuff in here is pretty much the same um, in relation to all the different modes and stuff that come on this transmitter. All the modes are the same, but there is one unique feature of this Predator X, uh, X Predator, that is different than the 509G. And I'm going to tell you that as I'm explaining the transmitter coming up next. So you're probably wondering what's so different about this one versus the 509G. Um, the biggest difference is this one works with my Fat Shark goggles. Um, I have tried every micro size drone that I've gotten from Lytake and other companies around the internet to see if they work with my Fat Sharks and this one actually does. So pretty awesome, we're gonna do some flying Later, we're gonna do some FPVing with the X Predators. So I'm super excited about that. Um, if you don't have goggles, it comes with this 5.8 gigahertz uh, monitor right here. So no problem there. You can do some, some monitor style FPV. So a lot of fun. 
So this right away, this controller is super nice. It does have two speed function on here. Um, it does have headless and one key return. You can turn the lights on and off. Pretty nice LEDs on there. Uh, and it does have a start and stop button here for the props. So if you're wondering how to arm this, don't try to do it with the sticks. Use the start and stop button there. Um, if you need to do a serious, like if you get in trouble and you want to stop the motors, I believe it's out and to the side. And then down and center will actually calibrate it. So if it starts to kind of toilet bowl on you and act kind of weird, it's not flying right when you take off and crash, go ahead and restart it and push the sticks down and center. Uh, also over on the right, we have the photo button and the video button. And I do have my antenna screwed on here, so I can go ahead and turn this on and I can power up the drone. And what I want to show you is that it does work with the, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it or not. Now when you power it up, make sure it is on a level surface. Go ahead and turn on the transmitter. And we should start to see a signal here in a second. Okay, we have a signal. So cool. That's working. Now let's check out the fat sharks. I'll plug those in for you. I don't know if you can see it there, but it is on the fat sharks and it's actually perfect. You can't see it, um, but when I record with the DVR later from the Fat Sharks, we're gonna record from here and also from the Fat Sharks. So we'll show you both of those pieces of video. Now the 509G has always been a really cool design to me because it is a mini Q500. Uh, I really do like that frame and the fact that it is designed to look like a miniature unique Q500. I'm a big fan of unique, so that's pretty cool to me. Um, the 510, however, just kind of steps it up a level uh, with the design on this. It's, it's really kind of cool looking. I, I kind of like this little alien approach, uh, almost like the tarantula style copters that um, some of these companies sell. So the camera is pretty much the same as the older model. Um, but the coolest thing about this one is that it works with my Fat Sharks. So um, landing gear, they're pretty much the same height, same camera. You can probably even use the same props on these. I believe they are exactly the same size. So we, I have some extra props for the 509 that I can use on there. The landing gear are designed a little differently, a little beefier on the, the 510. And pretty much very, very similar design. Just They kind of hardened everything out on the, the 510, made it a little more streamlined and aggressive looking. Almost reminds me of a sport boat, but it's pretty cool looking. So let's go ahead, let's go outside and, and do some flying with the X Predators. Uh, 510G. Okay, so as you saw in some of this video, the camera footage is really, really, really jittery and has a ton of jello in it, like right out of the box with this quad. So um, to remedy that a little bit, I saw on YouTube there's some other guys putting some foam in between the quad and the camera. So as you can see here, what I did was I took a couple pieces of foam here and put in between the camera and the frame of the quad, so that might help relieve some of the jello. Um, I'm gonna find out next. It's really, really windy out. Look at that. Super windy. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and do a review on the X Predators. This is the 510G version, and it has the 5.8 gigahertz monitor included on there with a full HD view of what's in front of us out here. I'm hanging out today at the home plate with the X Predators. And I gotta say, I've had a few flights on this and I did some FPVing with it already. 
and I really like it compared to the 509 it's pretty much the same machine um, just with a cooler upgraded body so I really think this one's gonna stay in uh, my collection this is gonna be one of the ones that's gonna be a keeper for me so uh, without further ado let's go ahead and arm it and the way you do that some people call it bind on their reviews go up and down and then you're ready to arm it so we also have a, a video card in there a micro SD card I'm gonna press record on the transmitter I don't know if you can really see this here but we do have a full view of what's in front of the copter so I'll go ahead and take off and I'll go through some of the modes with you and show you how cool the 510G is press the start stop button and I'll go ahead and take off now it is super windy today you can see the copter leaning into the wind the winds coming from my left right now and it really does have a nice lean into the wind it's trying to maintain altitude because this is an altitude hold copter see I'm hands off right here and it's pretty much holding its own right in front of me almost like it has GPS on board I know it doesn't but we can pretend if we want to so it flies into a tree but I wanted to say I'm really happy that I can bring you guys along on some of my flights. This is really something that I enjoy doing. Hey, how's it going? So, let's fly out over here toward first base. Hopefully I can come back. Now you're gonna get a lot better video with this quad if you fly a little less, with a little less pitch so if you're in that first speed and you're doing your pans and you're really not pumping a lot of throttle you're going to get a lot better video my video feed did just go out for a second it might be because I'm standing next to this fence to my left and right that's surrounding the baseball field that will cause some interference on some setups but I'm flying at line of sight right here and I'm kind of enjoying it so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a higher rate of pitch by hitting this speed mode so now we can fly a little more pitch and a little faster kind of zooming around there and the wind is really aggressive right now for this 510 but it's it's moving right into the wind just fine I wouldn't go up super high because this quad is really really lightweight watch it zing slingshot downwind it's really something there I'm gonna try to make my way back on these really windy days guys you want to uh, always think ahead if you are a new pilot and you fly up too high you will probably lose this little guy on a really windy day now I did notice that this quad will drop quite a bit if you just kind of let go of the throttle for a bit it'll kind of descend and come down for some reason um, and this is me flying it on on different days than today so I'm gonna sometimes it does want to climb a lot so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down but this is an altitude hold copter like I said if I let go of the throttle I'm going to come down a little further try to come back over toward us really is fighting that wind but I'm surprised it's actually doing this well because it's super windy I don't know if you can see the trees up there but really windy today and I have an FPV cam on top of the copter that we're going to use later so we're going to hook up the fat sharks to that that's a little camera that you can get on horizonhobby.com you can put it on any aircraft you want with a little bit of hot glue just put it right on top then you can use your goggles on the 5.8 spectrum and you can fly some FPV a little another a little selfie try not to fly into the fence there is a little red light on the copter too if you uh, if you are recording you'll see that on the copter underneath still kinda looks like a Q500 had a baby with a tarantula maybe 
don't know if you've seen the tarantula quad. That's a pretty big favorite. Some of these cheaper quads. It's flying really nice though. Let's try some of these modes. Let's try the keyless return. I'll go out there just a little bit. I'm gonna press the keyless return on my left here. And it's beeping. So it is trying to make its way back. Check it out, it's pretty cool. This is quite a bit of wind coming across here. And it is making its way back over to me. So that's actually pretty cool. So I'm gonna take it out of that mode now just by hitting the stick. I'm gonna fly back up. And now let's try the headless mode. The headless mode is for when you're doing video pans. We might be losing battery, so I might do another battery here. I'm gonna stop the motors. Okay, so that was pretty cool. I'm gonna put another battery in here. I have a few more that we can fly, and I'll show you some of these other modes. Okay guys, I have another battery in here, and uh, we're ready to go. We'll go ahead and arm it now by going up and down. And you can also turn the LEDs on and off with this light button if you want to, and your video and photo button here. I'm gonna go ahead and start recording the video. Now, one thing about this, I did do the phone mod, so the video you're going to be seeing on this flight and from the previous one is from the foam mod. It makes a, I think it makes a huge difference when you're flying this 510 because the video was quite jittery and had a lot of jello in it. So we were talking about headless mode earlier and if some of you guys are new to this you might not know what headless mode is. But headless mode is essentially for when you're trying to do a pan and you want to, you want to have the copter stay in the direction that it was originally heading. So if you press, if you're going to the left and you press headless mode it'll continue in that direction and it's going to beep the whole time so it's going to give you a nice smooth pan. And no matter which way I pull the stick, I'm going to go ahead and take it out. So no matter which way you pull the stick, it's going to continue along on that pan, that trajectory that you're originally going. So if I'm going to the left, it's going to continue to the left. And it's going to beep, it's kind of annoying, but it does let you know, hey, I'm in headless mode. So it's really, it's still handling the wind quite well. I'm not going really super high. We'll go ahead and start that video again. There we are. Like I said, this is definitely a keeper. I'm gonna keep this copter. Just for fun flying, playing around. Gonna be a lot better, a lot easier on those days where there's a lot less wind. But it was sunny outside and I had to come out here and see if I could get this review done for you guys. The 510. Put a little more power into it, try to come back. It's getting blown away a little bit. You wouldn't believe how windy it is up there. I'm pretty sure it's 25, might be 25 plus up at the top of the trees. So the higher up you guys go, it's going to be windier and windier higher up. So as this thing goes up, you have less chance of getting it back. So you want to fly a little closer to the ground. We give it a little more throttle, try to bring it back. So let's play around, see if we can do that flip mode. I don't know if it's going to work while the camera's on. I believe that turn button is the flip button. Might be pushing it to try to flip in this wind anyway. But if you're new to this, I would definitely recommend one of these to get started. This is a little better than the smaller handheld micros you've seen on our channel. Those are fun for indoors and playing around. You get bored with those in a, you know, a few hours you're ready for something different. So. This is a good little mid-size copter to get after you get something that's a little smaller. Well that was a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and land this and do some FPV now. 
bring it back to the, see if I can get it back to the home plate. Okay, I'm gonna press stop. See if it doesn't tip over. There we go, nice. That's the 510G. All right, let's do it. Hey guys, thanks for watching that awesome review. Now we're gonna do some FPV with the X Predators. I took a little camera and I put it on the very top. This is just a little plug and play, all in one FPV cam. You can get these on horizonhobby.com. So what I did was I took a little bit of hot glue, I stuck it on the bottom of it, and it's not permanent. It'd pop right off and you can peel this hot glue off. Uh, also secured the battery on the back to that little system. So I'm gonna do some FPV in with this one. Um, I discovered that flying with my fat sharks on this system down here that came with the copter, it wouldn't go more than like 15 to 20 yards, so it's really close in and I couldn't get out there and, and do some real FPVing with that. I was kind of excited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it with this one.